So X will take it away. Good morning, everyone. Um, so we are wondering why Project Kenya when you were presented an ethical engine. This is a good name I gave. And I will explain why I call it that way. Um, ah, I have no control. Um, yeah. Oh, no. Oh, uh, Sorry about that. Of course, the technology track is almost an epic technology track. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Did you read it? Yeah. So the current state of Transmart is relying on an R server that sits either on the same server as Transmart or a different one. The problem is this setup is for the one who actually uses Transmart and have experience to use um, cluster algorithms, heat maps. Um, all those NPR problems make it extremely slow and extremely fast. So basically, if someone is doing that, you have no way of even using Transmart if everything sits on the same server currently. This is a comic I found, and this illustrates perfectly what I mean by that is one at a time, you have the right to do the workflow you wish. Gainier is actually the spear of Odin. Odin is a Nordic god uh, in uh, the Nordic mythology. And I thought it was appropriate as to s a proper way as Transmart as Odin and Gainier as its spear to achieve a new level of um, what can I say? power computation. And give Transmart a new tool and a new ace in power capacities. In 1.2, the analytical engine is pretty much the same as in 1.1 and 1.0. It relies solely on R as for the public servers and all the public instances. The process is synchronous, meaning that once you run your query, you have to wait on the page or put it in the run background, but basically it's just hiding the fact that it's still attached uh, to the process and you are stuck with it uh, while it's running. It doesn't scale easily, as I said, it's solely an R server and either you put it on a bigger server or that's it. So the scalability is not that great. No cache mechanism. You have a way to save your result, but that's pretty much it. Uh, it's a simple architecture. So for a quick startup, it's very simple, very easy, but it has many limitations. That actually goes with that very simple uh, architecture. What we want to do with Gainier is achieve an asynchronous process. What do I mean by that? Is once you launch your job, it will run on the, in the background, and when it's ready, it will come back to you and say, okay, the results are available, and you can look them up whenever you want. They will be cached. So there will be a cache mechanism to allow you to, if someone else is running the same analysis as you, the compute node won't do the computation again. It will just retrieve the previous result and provide it to you in a uh, much quicker, uh, at a much quicker pace. So you compute only once, no matter. Currently, if two different users do the same computation, it will be computed twice. And if you do the same computation again because you have lost results or whatever reason, it will compute two, three, four times. So here we aim to achieve a way to 
actually cache those results. Um, we want as well to implement a NIME-like, uh, NIME is uh, Swiss project, a workflow project. So we want to achieve a workflow engine as well to allow you to input uh, workflows directly in the analytical engine to run a sequence or a parallel number of analysis and not one at a time, a single one, sequentially. The analytics and Vault, in the first, so the first goal will be to offload already existing analytics in TrendSmart. So for the version 1.0, we do not aim at replacing everything. No, we aim at replacing the one that are the data intensive and computation intensive. Here is an exhaustive list of all the, the one we aim at replacing in the first uh, few months that are in 1.2 and that are data intensive and compute intensive. We will use as well a better rendering engine. Currently it relies just, it's a snapshot of picture most of the time of the results that you can download and save, but there is no interaction with the results. For instance, for a heat, I will give you examples, more examples a bit later on, but I will take now one example, the heat map. Currently in Transmart is one picture, but if you want to zoom in, it's pretty much impossible. If you have one region of interest, it's extremely complicated <coughs> to know what this region looks like. There is no way of either focusing on this single region or just exploring graphically uh, the region. Just zooming in and hoping that it, you will be able to read what's going on. So this is my as a workflow engine. This is the near as backend front end. You will be able to upload your own data as well as hitting Transmart to pull data out of Transmart to do your analysis. You will be enabled to upload your data. However, your data won't be persisted. It will be your own property, it will be stored for you, but it won't go back into Transmart. It will stay into the engine for as long as you need for the analysis or, or for the processing later on. I could be part of as an example, but you could, maybe not right away, but later on you will be able to implement your own set of scripts um, to run your own specific uh, analysis that could be less general, more focused on the study you want, uh, your study or your type of data you want to know analyze. Of course, um, when we are dealing with analytical data, it means we are dealing with data, which means we will have a layer of security. Not everyone will be able to uh, query any kind of data from any user. We, not everyone will be able to access the cache in the same way. So we'll implement a level of security to make sure that nothing gets lost, nothing gets extracted without proper security checks beforehand. The compute unit, this is the the idea we have for the compute we need in the version 1.0. So it's a cloud-based architecture for scalability reasons because currently at Emperor College we, we are using OpenStack. So we will be using, op which is an open source technology, open source um, software. OpenStack Heat allows you to fire VMs of the size you want, as many as you want, with the hardware you have, of course, on um, a split of a second. I was reading two weeks ago, uh, people from Microsoft fired 75,000 virtual machines in six hours. So, and when I say fire is launching and doing some compu uh, simple computation with it in six hours. So it allows a lot of room for 
a huge number of people running at the same time, a really data intensive and algorithm intensive computations. OpenStack Sweep is the node for storing your data in an efficient way for uh, the computation. It, the, the VM won't store the data. Swift will store the data and will query Swift to get the data it needs to run the computation. Why doing that is because Swift is an object-oriented uh, database which can store up to 5 gigabyte objects. This means that if you come to us and say, oh, I have one petabyte of data, no problem. If you come and say, I need to process this in, let's say, a couple of hours, no problem. I will just scale up to the number of VMs I need to do that, store everything in Swift, and we're good to go. These are small examples of the rendering engine we aim at when I say dynamic. So that's fine. Let's see for the first example. So don't worry, it won't move all the time. This is just a dynamic example of the bot plot. So behind the scene is generating dynamically data to show that it's possible to dynamically display uh, box plots. You can zoom in as much as you want. You can, I mean, this is absolute. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Thanks. This is for the box plot, but you have many other examples. You have co-occurrence. All of those are based on, on D3 libraries. Do all of those are publicly available, um, can be re-implemented, are free of use. Um, I think it's all of them are, uh, most of them are, um, GPL2 uh, licenses. Another example, sequences. Uh, so here you can explore different bits. You can go as deep as you want. So when I was thinking about the heat map, I was thinking about this, for instance. You have clusters you are interested in. You have several representation, and you can see on two different projects, projections how your cluster fares. All those examples are on this three page. If you want to look them up or see other ones, be my guest but we'll go for something very similar, implements new ones uh, through the D3 library. Those are just a few examples I pulled out from, from the website. Uh, this is an overview of the version 1.0. Um, it's just I put all the elements together and to give you a rough idea of the architecture we are going to. Um, this is benchmark. The bottom, on the on the bottom bit, this is Transmart. We'll call Transmart through the REST API implemented by the Hive. And this is the vision we have on longer term. The idea is to add up new capacities for computing. So FPGAs acceleration, GPU acceleration, high throughput accelerations. Um, you will be able as well to upload or download uh, Exceladins, which will 
be able, which allow you to run locally your computation. So if you have only very little data and you don't want to use the whole platform, which will be basically the same as using a bazooka to kill a fly, you can still download those plugins that will be made available um, for running locally your computation. But if you want to contribute them as well, it will be possible to upload these add-ins and share with the community. Thank you very much. Do you have any question? Thank you, Axel. Uh, again, I have another question for Axel about uh, the analytics uh, engine that uh, converts into the real world of Yes. I mentioned mean, the other video that there is a project trying to use Digipop R to give you uh, something that we're thinking about. Yes. Yes, definitely. Can we do this show something? Uh, no. no. Okay. Uh, you have a question? For Tom? Yeah, I have a very good question. It's probably a super fast for all that to do. Thanks for your presentation. I think it's a great idea to do it. Um, but when I'm thinking about it, in the end, you have to um, come up with a whole set of best practices. You can develop this type of thing. You can use all of your different practices. I'm trying to think from a practical perspective. Um, obviously, we need something like this in current situation. Uh, I think that's definitely not where we want to be. Uh, but in terms of dramatically going forward, uh, how would you view using Galaxy for this? Because it's possible to use Galaxy to separate that into that project. And I would think you can make a more dramatic approach to the same project. So this is one question I faced. Why do you want to go for something that big when you have Galaxy available? The simple answer is this. Galaxy is not scalable either. You will say, yes, people have made implementations on the cloud. Fair enough. I had a closer look. I spent time how we can improve this. The truth is Galaxy is not that flexible. You will need software engineers to actually do the whole setup which is not trivial at all. It requires you as well not to do, as I said, a scalable system. It's actually a duplication of galaxies. So what they do currently is they have a bunch of servers bringing each one of them galaxy with the, each one of them with their own setup and their own database, their own everything. Nothing is federated. Everything is independent. Uh, I mean, 2011, okay. yes, but Cloudman, yes, but Cloudman behind the scenes does this. It fires a new VM containing Galaxy and you can run the workflow through Galaxy. But on the other hand, same as I did, as I said before, you still need to package everything, etc. So it's, it's, with that setup, what I didn't say is we can do the same as well. All the VM can be prepackaged with Galaxy as well, and when you fire, I took R an example. The truth is, I can do it with MyFab, I can do it with SAS, I can do it with even with... The architecture I'm offering here is flexible enough so that if you want to use Garuda, if you want to use Galaxy as a workflow engine, because you trust the engine, it's possible that we package a VM. We start with R because it's open source, it's very well known. But the truth is, if you want to do a workflow with Galaxy, it's possible as well. You just, we just fire a VM containing Galaxy and run the, uh, the whole idea here is to make something scalable and flexible to evolution to the needs of the users, the specific needs of the users. So, but, so, so Galaxy itself is not scalable. It doesn't mean I'm discarding it. It means it can be incorporated if we see that it brings value to the platform. Let's say this is between that. Gustavo had a question as well. 
Um, my question is, uh, how far are you in, uh, in this project? Is there, is there something to show at this point? No. No. Um, at this point, we have made certain choices. So to make the whole thing consistent and based on open source technologies, um, I spent some time trying to investigate which platforms were already out there. Uh, why not going for Galaxy uh, directly and just change it so that it fits our needs? Uh, but I don't have anything to show uh, to show yet. We have done some tests to see how fast we can fire VMs, how we can package them. How so? There is there has been back testing and um, but there is not real system to show. Thank you. Yeah, so we have time for one more question. Okay, thank you, Rachel.